morning, Christian life. Uh, so excited to just bring this Christmas devotion to you. Um, pretty amazing that we've come to the end of our Advent series and we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. We are celebrating the fact that he loved us so much that he came willingly to die for each one of us. And we are celebrating and are excited for his coming again, uh, for the fulfillment of his promise. And uh, what an awesome time for family just to come together. We've stressed, uh, stressed so much during this series that, that we make it about the one we are celebrating. Not just about the celebration, not just about the party or all those fun things uh, that we've talked about, whether it be our Christmas jammies that you got or, or the opening presents or what else? The Giving presents, presents to the yeah. guys. Christmas tree and the lights and the decorations and daddy almost killing himself getting up on the roof to hang the lights. Uh, not, all of that's awesome. All of that is, is, is a part of the celebration, but it's not who we are celebrating. Jesus Christ is who we are celebrating during the Advent season. And, and like we've said many times, Advent, meaning the Latin word arrival or the coming, we are celebrating, celebrating his coming again. He promised us that he's coming back to get us, to coming back to rescue us, and that's exciting. And so I just want to begin by reading from Luke 2, uh, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth uh, in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were, with, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all the things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. What I love is the line that the angel told them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. And then he goes on to say, Today your Savior was born. Uh, what an awesome... Uh, set of 20 verses that we just read about the birth of Jesus, just reminding us uh, of the, an incredible story uh, of what God, of God's love for each one of us. Um, you know, there, I, I enjoy the season. I've talked about that in a lot of different ways. I love getting prepared. I love the uh, preparation. I love seeing the decorations come out. I love seeing the tree get decorated. Uh, what part? Of, what part the of the? Presents to the guys. You like giving presents to the guys the at Sheepgate? Service. Yeah. What's uh, the candlelight service? That's one of the things you like to get prepared. What are some something that we pull out that really gets you excited out of the decorations? What part do you like? Um, I like going to see all the lights. You like going to see all the lights. I like picking out the tree too. Sometimes if mm -hmm. we don't have to walk a mile, and Mom talks us into mm -hmm. going to a tree farm. 
I like going, yeah. you know, just into Menards or Lowe's and, and then picking that one. Shifts carrying Mikey around. Yeah, yeah. So all that fun, but really, I I like it. I I enjoy it because I know what's coming. Or, I know that we are celebrating Jesus and that no matter what's going on around us, um, God is a message for his children is, is do not be afraid because I have already won the victory. I have already uh, promised you the return of my son after sending him as a baby to rescue the bride, to give his life. And, and that's amazing. And so we really encourage you during this time to not miss out on the reason we are celebrating. I want to read this uh, little story out of this Advent book I have, uh, the Family Advent Celebration. Um, and this is by this little story is by R.C. Sproul. Once upon a time, in a tiny land of Palestine, two kings were alive at the same time and at the same place. One of the kings was about 70 years old. The other king was an infant. The big king was evil. The little king was pure. The big king was rich and powerful. The little king was stricken by poverty. The big king lived in an opulent palace. The little king lived in a stable. The little king's mother was a peasant girl. His adoptive father was a carpenter. The big king's name was Herod. He was called the Great. He was a puppet king. That is, in this period of Jewish history, Palestine was ruled by the emperor of Rome. Rome had conquered Palestine, and in war, an emperor had placed a local fellow in Galilee to be his deputy there. Herod became governor of Galilee in 40 BC, and in the same year, the Roman, Roman Senate declared him king of Judea. Herod was a master builder. He is famous for building a magnificent temple in Jerusalem. One wall of that temple, the Wailing Wall, that you might have heard of, still stands, boasting the giant stones that were King Herod's trademark. But Herod had a problem. Though he was called king of Judea, he was not a true king of Jews. He was not from the tribe of Judah. He was not a descendant of David. He was not even a Jew. One day Herod received some unusual visitors. They were men from the east. Tradition calls them three kings, but they were really magi or astrologers, possibly from Persia. The Magi came to Herod because they were following a star that led them to Palestine. They, entered the Her they, enter they inquired of Herod, Where is he who has been born king of Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Herod was greatly troubled by the question. He didn't like the idea of another king in his realm, especially a true king who was anointed by God. He tried to fool the wise men. He met with them secretly and asked them how to find this newborn king. He lied to the Magi. He pretended to want to find the baby king so he could worship him. What he really wanted was to kill the little king. The Magi left King Herod and followed the star to Bethlehem where they found the baby king. They fell down and worshipped him. They presented gifts to him. These gifts were uncommon. They were the type of gifts that the, in the Old Testament were reserved for royalty. They were gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When Herod realized that the Magi fooled him, to be, he became enraged. He commanded all the male babies two years old, old and under who lived in around Bethlehem to be killed. But God warned the baby's king father who fled with his wife and baby to Egypt. In a short time, King Herod died and, and the new king and his parents came back to Palestine. The big king died and now is remembered as a little king. The little king grew up and became Jesus, the greatest. He is now the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. This simple story is a tragic footnote to the first Christmas. It is the record of a king who missed his king. In a world and in history, there have been many kings, queens, princes, and princesses. Each of them has ruled with limited sovereignty. Yet each of these persons who has ever worn a crown has been under the dominion and authority of the supreme king. Christmas marks the birth date of, the, of ultimate royalty, the nativity of the superlative king, the king of all kings who reigns forever. What I want to encourage you, Christian life, and what I talked about my, to my daughters and family in our morning devotions during this Advent season is that the best way to love Jesus during this time, the best way to celebrate him is to pass the word. To, to spread the message. And so I challenge my kids, hey, go to school. Ask God who you can talk to, who you can share, what the real reason of Christmas is. And really, that shouldn't stop just because we're closing out Advent season. 
that needs to be a lifestyle, a lifetime of spreading the message of freedom. The spreading the spreading the message of Christmas is not just a once a year time. It's a it's throughout the year, throughout our days, our weeks, our months. And so I challenge you is that even during this time where we are uh, celebrating, going to families, eating big meals, opening gifts, giving gifts, who can you share this message with? So that just like Herod, they don't miss out on the real king. They don't miss out on the reason we are celebrating. That they come to know Jesus, just like the people that gave their life to the Lord this last Sunday, is that, that we want them to understand who he is. We want to, to, to spread the news that they don't have to be afraid in a time where fear is rampant, where all kinds of turmoil and crazy things are happening around us, is the Bible wants us to know, God wants us to know, that he loves us, and do not be afraid, because Jesus is coming again. And so spread the news. Be a light that Christ has called us to be. He lives inside of us, and we carry that joy, that hope, that faith, that peace that we've been talking about during this Advent season. And so just want to encourage you this morning. I hope you've had a tremendous Christmas. I hope going into the new year, you are challenged to draw into God and to share the message of Jesus Christ even more with, with everybody we come into contact with. We love you, Christian Life. I know Megan is with Mike right now. She'd love to be in here, but we'd have trouble getting this accomplished with all of them here. Mm -hmm. And so we, we wanted to give this message to you. We wanted to encourage you and just wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from the Hunsberger family. We love you. Have a great day.